Well, there's something at the last election that seems to have driven otherwise rational people into dark and embarrassing places. Barack Obama's twin electoral victories are supposed to have changed everything and put an end to the paranoid style of American politics. Obama was touted as living proof, as he himself often noted, that the arc of history bends towards something awesome, likely the permanent triumph of establishment liberalism. And almost everyone in Washington actually believed this was true. And then Hillary Clinton lost, proving that the rest of the country never really bought into that program. What a shock it was. And D.C. has still not recovered from it. The result, hysteria like we haven't seen here since the 1950s. Suddenly, no conspiracy is too nutty to be taken seriously as long as it pertains to Russia. No act is too improper to be excused as long as it was supposedly meant to stop Russia. Extremism in the fight against Putin is no vice, suddenly. Well, the contortions can make your head spin just a month ago. The media told us it was absurd to say the Trump administration was spied on Trump, rather Obama spied on Trump. Now they're saying it would be absurd not to spy on Trump. Susan Rice's decision to unmask her political enemies, far from a crime, they're now telling us it was routine and necessary. Well, at this point, there are at least two key questions that remain unanswered in this saga. First, did Susan Rice include the unmasked names in her presidential daily briefs for the president, President Obama? And second, did Rice or her associates leak those names to the press? Either one would be a stunning misuse of the national security apparatus. It ought to be the media's job to discover if any of that happened. But instead, they're flamboyantly not interested. Jim Schuto, for example, CNN's chief national security correspondent, told viewers yesterday the Susan Rice story was, quote, ginned up by the right wing as, quote, a distraction. Well, of course, until 2013, Schuto was a political appointee working for the Obama administration. He has every reason to defend his former co-workers, no matter what they do. The question is, why did CNN put him on this beat in the first place? But next, undeterred, CNN rolled out his breaking news banner to proclaim, brace yourself, that a friend of Susan Rice's had denied on background she did anything wrong. <laughs> that was news. Meanwhile, anchor Don Lemon announced he wouldn't, quote, insult the intelligence of his viewers by talking about the Rice story at all. Instead, the channel is entirely committed to covering Trump's collusion with Russia, even though there remains precisely no evidence such a thing actually happened, and so on. You've seen it. It's not news coverage. It is mass delusion. And someday Washington is going to wake up from all of this hungover and ashamed.